Hey guys, Josh with Happy Little Landscapes here. Uh, today we're going to do a scene on an 18 by 24 inch canvas. And uh, it's going to have a little mountain here, a little waterfall, a bunch of trees. And a bunch of trees. So, uh, yeah, let's hit, let's get to it. We, um, today we're going to use almost every color we have from sap green to dark sienna to Van Dyke Brown, Phthalo Blue, Prussian Blue, Midnight Black, Alizarin Crimson, Titanium White, Cadmium Yellow, uh, Indian Yellow, Yellow Ochre, and Bright Red. So, for this painting, we gotta decide what we're gonna do. I try to do these videos and make it seem like I know what I'm gonna paint before so I can show you guys how to do it, but today we're just literally gonna make it up as we go along. So, do we want a blue sky or do we want a yellow sky is the question. Yellow, pinkish, reddish. I do love those yellow skies as I drop my paintbrush everywhere. So let's go into Indian yellow, just the smallest little bit. Okay, little tiniest little bit here. Just a little bit on the end of the brush. And we're gonna come up here and our sky is gonna start somewhere around here. Just want a little bit of yellow. Not a lot, just a little. Go into our yellow ochre, which is a little darker yellow tannish color. We're just making a little smudge up here. Doesn't need to look good yet. Doesn't need to blend. We're just dropping, literally dropping color up there. Just kind of blocking it in. Get a little bit more of the Indian yellow. Down here, get a little brighter. We can start to mix together. And we're just doing crisscross patterns. Just X's with our brush. Just like this. And that kind of blends everything together the way we want it to. We did start the canvas with Bob Ross liquid white just enough to you want just enough to see your fingerprint on there you don't want to have too much or it'll get real muddy and uh, it's no fun after that so let's get a little bit of our crimson throw that up in here and then we'll use that last little area to uh, throw our blues and blacks in so go right into our Prussian blue just like that now, the trick is keeping the bit of blue up here without having your yellow sky go green. So we're gonna wash our brush here. We use liquid paint thinner or low odor mineral spirits. You can find them at, uh, <clears throat> you find them at Lowe's, you can find them at Home Depot. Anyway, just low odor mineral spirits. That way it's not gonna stink up your house while you're uh, trying to get after it. So let's take a little bit of the Midnight black, just to make this nice and dark up in the corner. You don't want too much of the blue mixing. And if you mix it with the black, it's less likely to go green on you. Like that. Take our two inch brush here and we'll start in our, our lightest area. And just start blending. Most of this is gonna be covered anyway, so it doesn't matter, but we wanna blend it. Blend it, blend it, blend it. Now don't come out here into your blue <clears throat> and drag it into your yellow. It's going to go green real fast. Be careful. Now what we want to do is get a little bit of a buffer between the yellow and the blue. So we'll put a little bit thicker of that crimson color. So I said we're going to lose a lot of our yellow, but it's okay. You don't want it to go green in the sky. There we go. Just by mixing those together. Keeping the darks dark and the lights light. We can kind of do that. Go, get a little bit more black crimson mixture here. There we go. Try to stay out of your guys' way as I'm doing it. I forget that I'm filming sometimes. And that I can't get all up in your guys' face while I'm trying to show you what to do. You know what I mean? So we're gonna wash this brush off and it doesn't matter how long you take on your sky. I always say take the longest amount of time on your sky because without a good sky, what kind of painting are we gonna have? But in this painting, we don't need a lot of sky. It's gonna have a lot of, a lot of mountain and trees in it where we're not gonna really even use a lot of this. But we gotta do it for our mind's eye. I don't see it up there. It's hard for me to. Uh, it's hard for me to kind of imagine what's coming next if I don't kind of see the whole picture. <clears throat> Especially when we don't know what we're doing today. We're just kind of making it up as we go along. 
we'll take some of our darker color and just rub it down in here for our shadows. We're going to have tons and tons of trees and shadows, so it doesn't matter. We just don't want to lose this bit of our sky right here. This is going to be the best bit. You can see it's kind of orange over here. It all depends on how much color you put in each area. Depends on what your sky looks like. If you want it brighter, let me take, I'll take a little filbert brush and we can put a sun right in here. Okay. So what I'll do is just get the cadmium yellow, which is the brightest yellow that we have. And you can tell there's a little difference there. All right, just go in circles. A lot of times I'll take the brush like this and rotate it, keeping an eye on the bristles. And that way you can get nearly a perfect circle just by kind of pushing it and spinning it without letting it move. If you don't like that and you want it a little bit brighter, you take a little bit brighter white, spin it again, and those whites and yellows will kind of blend in so you'll have a difference. It's not just going to be one solid color sun up there. That looks pretty neat, actually. So we'll clean this because we'll end up using it later. End up using it later. The, a lot of times I forget to tell you guys what kind of brushes that I use, and it's because I have a ton, and half the time I don't know what I'm going to use. So, so far we've used the Bob Ross one inch brush, the two inch brush, uh, the Filbert brush. We're going to need a, a, an array of fan brushes to use, different sizes. Uh, we might even go all the way down to the micro size fan brush for some of the tips, tops of the trees. Going to have our palette knives. I've got the Bob Ross ones, the plastic ones work fine, and then just a couple little liner brushes for the minor details and stuff. So back to our sky. I like to put a lot of clouds in our sky. And when you do your clouds, you can kind of stay along the edges of your different colors and that kind of breaks up so it's not a crisp line between your two colors. So but for my sky, I always like to do dramatic skies barely ever see me paint just a plain old blue sky. So what I did there was get a little bit of midnight black, a little bit of crush, uh, alizarin crimson and just mixing them right here on the brush. Doesn't very much matter. You just want a kind of reddish purplish color just on the corner. So a lot of times it depends on how we're looking at it. Our clouds would be if the, the scene I'm gonna paint, it's like we're down here looking up, so your clouds are gonna be long versus horizontal, right? They're gonna be real big up here and smaller as they go back. So in order for me, I like to do that like this, and we'll just make a mess just to show you guys. It doesn't really much matter what you do, as long as you know how to make it look like you wanna make it look. So what I did was just literally make a mess right on the canvas, and then we're gonna take the top corner of our brush and just blend it down by doing little circles. And we're not mixing it totally. We're gonna leave some spots light, some spots dark, some spots thick, some spots thin. Just however it goes, you don't wanna work too hard at it, is what I'm saying. Just kinda let it be how it is. Okay, and we might even lose 90% of that cloud, but it looks cool. And you never know, when you're at a stage like this, you might like your sky so much that you changed the whole idea of what you were gonna paint. You were gonna do this one scene and now that scene's not gonna work anymore but you don't wanna cover it up. So don't, change your idea, let it fly. You don't have to do exactly like what I'm doing. I'm just trying to teach you some of the techniques that I know that uh, might help you paint a little easier. So I do love that color, but this time we're gonna add a little bit of Prussian blue so it's gonna be a little bit more of a bluish cloud. I mean, I can't really tell the difference until I put it up there. So we could come from, hmm, we come from this side over here, big, just kind of trail off. Shoot, we could come all over here, it doesn't matter. Literally doesn't matter. And we're just gonna lightly do our little circles and that just kind of mixes it up just enough to where it leaves it thick and it looks like a, you know, it looks like clouds look, they're never the same. They're never gonna have the same cloud shape. It's not a universal shape. 
and you just do it until you like the way it looks. Like I said, down here, it's all gonna be mountains, so it doesn't matter what happens. If you come down too far, you can always cover it. And then every so often, just go back and forth and drop some of that color onto the canvas. We're gonna cover it eventually. It'll turn out being a cool looking shadow or, you know, an effect that you could, people will make you, will make people think like, how did they get that, that purplish down in the snow or whatever this turns out to be down here? We don't even know yet. We don't even know. All right, so we've got our shadows of our clouds. Remember, if you come blue, you don't want to come down into your yellow, it's going to go green, and then you're going to have like a like a wicked alien sky, which I'm not against. I'm not against doing a... I, I was planning on doing a UFO in this one, if I'm quite honest. Maybe right up here, do a UFO, but that's going to come later. So, what I want to do now, show you a different way to make clouds, just with the... Liz, uh, just with... Um, what the hell is this color? The yellow oak, the yellow oak, or get a little bit of it on your knife, and then down in between our clouds here, we'll come in and maybe we'll go right over our sun that we did, right? Just a little skinny cloud, just by pushing it in. If you've ever painted with Bob Ross, kind of how he does the water lines, and you push real hard and kind of mush it about, right? And come up in here. It doesn't matter. Literally doesn't matter. So I don't want to get that purpley bluey greeny nonsense up into my yellow so we're going to wash the one inch brush if you hear the sound when i bend down that's my little beater bucket bob has a thing where he smacks it along the side of his easel and it sprays paint thinner everywhere you don't want to do that if you're in your house so get a little two dollar lowe's bucket put like a you know a little rack in the bottom of it they sell specific things for it i'm a painter on a budget so I found this in my garage and it's been working perfectly for me. So when you hear that <clears throat> noise, that's me kind of beating the devil out of it. So, all right. So I don't want to cover over our sun that we made, right? We already did a little bit, but so a lot of times you can either turn your canvas upside down or you can turn your hand upside down and just start mixing until it looks the way you want it to look. that, cover it over our sun a little, and then what I'll do is put a different, different something or other in here. Ooh, just even that, it's just a cool little shadow. All right, so since my big old hand kind of covered my brush, my sun a little bit, I'll just make the bottom half of him like that, like he's behind the cloud. And don't be worried about using different colors in your sky. I, when I first started painting, it was Blue sky, white clouds, maybe a little bit of black to do the shadow. But you could do more than black. You could do blue, you could do brown. Brown makes a really wicked shadowy color. See, so what I'm doing here is taking a little bit of blue, that Prussian blue, and just making a mess, right? I'm talking about a little bit, the teeniest little bit. Because all we're trying to do is make a shadow underneath this. The sun's coming from the top, so these will be white, and then the rest is gonna be shadowy. So I really want it to, uh, really want to have a cool shadow. When you put these different colors in, it gives you this depth. And people will look and they'll see, they'll see the purple and the yellow and the pink and all that. And then the closer they look, they'll see these different colors that we put in that are going to give it a kind of a cool look. So, I mean, we can even take brown, right? The dark sienna, put a little bit of it, wherever you want, just a little line, doesn't matter. And then we're gonna come back in and just so lightly, otherwise it will disappear, very lightly blend it out and you get these cool little shadows and that's just yellow and brown. You don't have to use just plain old white or the same, the same color every time. It, uh, it actually looks a little cooler when you experiment and use different colors. <clears throat> Some of that paint off my brush there. Just gonna kind of blend this in stormy sky up here. And you kind of want to have it where you can't really tell where the pink and purple stop and where it kind of just blends away to nothing. Okay, let's get on these clouds now. So we're going to use the same kind of technique, a little bit of yellow, a little bit of white. Not too much or it's going to be too much. You know what I mean? So 
we're going to come up here and just on where we're imagining the edges of our clouds, we're just going to lightly lay down a little bit of this uh, white and yellow mixture, just a little bit off the edge of our line. And then we'll see what it looks like. If we don't like it, we can always change it or put a different color or whatever. So remember how lightly we were blending. You want to go even lighter. You don't want to blend this away. It's very easy to push too hard and then this whole thing disappears and you're left with nothing. You want to have that little bit of white. You don't want to, don't want to blend it all away. Otherwise, you're just going to keep doing it. It's going to get lighter and lighter. So that looks kind of cool. We got a little bit of yellow and our white up here that's bouncing off each other. Let me just get some straight old white. Come up here and kind of decide where this guy is going to live. I kind of tend to stay on the edges of my shadows. That's what I kind of try to do. Now again, with the white, it's going to disappear quick. You just barely want to just disturb it. You don't even want to blend it out. You just want to disturb what you did. And then we'll come back with our two inch brush. And we'll just swipe up like this, just barely touching and then come to the side. And if you did your job well enough, you're gonna have you know, this nice little soft puffy cloud. If it's too thick, then just keep blending it. There we go. Straight across. We can tell by our sun and our sky that everything's nice and light on there and that way it's not going to transfer from one side to the other. <clears throat> if you get up there, you get a big old glob of paint up there and then go to brush it across, it's going to smush it. All right, let's get a, bit, a little bit of crimson in our cloud, a little bit of purple, a little bit of white. Try not to get paint all over our hands as we do it. And then we'll come up here and like I said, just stay on the edges of our clouds edges of the shadows that we made right right on the top you want the lightest area especially for right here since our sun's right here the lightest area is going to be on the top come back get some more white we'll probably end up having to go back to our our paint box and get more paint but that is what it is okay every so often i'm grabbing a little bit of the blue a little bit of the black and red and everything else just kind of dropping in these little shapes over our shadows you want to leave a little bit of room in between each one so they're not right on top of each other and that's going to give you room to blend them. We'll start down here just very lightly, very lightly. Can't stress the amount of lightness that you have to touch this. It's so light. Remember, don't blend it all the same. Don't make this the same color as this. You want different colors in there that's going to draw people's eye. And they're going to go, wow, you're really good at painting skies, man. And you go, yeah. I am, thanks. I just won't tell them it's our little secret, okay? You never saw this. You never saw this video. And you can show all your friends when you live paint in front of them. They'd be like, bro, you've gotten really good. You'd be like, thanks, man, thanks. All right, let's do a little, uh, I'm gonna do just a little far off cloud, just pure white. Maybe a little stretch back there and then back in here. Just a little color. And it's mainly just pure white. You don't want to have a lot of shadows, otherwise we're going to end up losing all the the depth that we have if everything's all the same. You know what I mean? Just like that. Swipe up. Move to the side. And that just kind of flattens our cloud out. And if it's not enough, you can always go back. Like right here, it's not as bright as I want it to be. That's because every time we every time we start to blend, we're taking the brightness away from that white and mixing it with the other colors. So if it's ever not as bright as you want to be, just keep adding some white until you get your desired look. And then you can rock and roll. Now most of this is gonna be covered, so I'm not I don't really care about it. That's gonna be fine up there. I do want to put something over here though because there's just going to be some trees over there, so we want some kind of cloud. We could continue on with this cloud, or we could do a... Yeah, let's just do that. We'll continue on with this cloud that's right here. I just want to have something back there, so a little bit of red, a little bit of black, 
red. Alizarin and crimson. We haven't touched the red red yet. We'll come up here. Say it's like this. It's just a far off guy. Connects. Bring another bit down there. Okay, so we've got this kind of U-shaped deal. Let's wipe off our brush so there's not so much paint on there. And because you left this little area, when it mixes down in, it looks so cool. Just really like full of depth. And that's all because you left this one little spot in between your layers. See what I mean? This almost looks like it wraps around and continues along again. That's really cool actually. A lot of times, I'll do a cloud and I think it's really, and I'll keep going and keep going and keep going and you end up ruining it. So with this one, that's our sun. We have a little bit, so we'll just do, how about we do some more of that yellow? We'll do yellow ochre and Indian yellow and we'll put it on the edge just to give it like a little sun-kissed touch every so often. The sun just hit right there and it's just, pow! Mix that up. That just very lightly. back with our white. Here, tips of our clouds on. You gotta make those weird noises, otherwise it doesn't work, guys. Let's do that. There we go, now we got this wicked. Remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. It doesn't have to look like Anything else got to look like whatever you painted it like. Whatever you want it to look like is what it's going to look like. I love this yellow cloud right there. You know what we could do? I did in one of my other paintings, which turned out awesomely. Let's just get some, every so often, like just literally every so often, put a little bit of bright yellow. And then we'll mix that in. It's going to look like the sunlight's reaching out onto these clouds. And just just kissing the top. Okay. Now remember, all you have to do is make a mess. It doesn't have to look at that. Bow, bow, bow. And people will see these little bits of yellow that we're hiding. And it's gonna make your sky look really cool. A nice dark point. I want some more shadow underneath this guy. Let's give him some life. Like and you could, I mean, you could play like this for hours. Just messing around with the shadows. But I don't want to make you guys too bored with that. So, our mountain, waterfall, trees. All right, I like that. That looks good. That looks good right there. All right, now we're doing a, we're gonna do a, uh, a mountain that kind of wraps around close to us with a waterfall and a bunch of pine trees. Let's take a step back and see what it looks like through the camera. <laughs> 